Hey everybody, and welcome to the second part for our intro to Fusion 360. If you haven't watched the first video where we go over the pure basics and the user interface, go ahead and check it out. And if you've watched that one, well, let's keep on going. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and explain a bit more about sketching in this video and how it works uh, and how we can use constraints to make our work a lot easier. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just like we saw in the first video, I'm gonna open up my origin so I can see it and I'm going to save. Now we're gonna go over in YouTube projects, make a new folder and call this thing uh, second video. Second or second project. All right, go in there and call this project two. Okay, so we've saved. So now everything that we do will be propagated over on the cloud account. To start the sketch, I'm going to either go to create and create sketch, or I'm gonna go and use the shortcut. So I'm gonna press S and from here, I have the create sketch. Also, if you don't have it here, just uh, go in the search, create, take it from here and just click over uh, on this uh, little icon that appears and that is going to put it in your design shortcuts since I already have it here it's there so I'm gonna click on create sketch choose which uh, side I want to create it on I want to use it on the XY click over here and let's start drawing so for this one since we, I want to show you how the constraints work I'm gonna use a line so for the line we can either go to create and choose a line or just press L as a shortcut and start creating so I'm gonna press L and take one over from here, all the way up to this side. Doesn't really matter. Uh, go up, go over like this, go up. And now once you uh, go ahead and choose what is the distance you want to make your line, if you click and uh, hold down the first mouse and drag outwards, you're gonna see that your selection transfers into a arc. So now I'm not gonna, I can go down here and make the arc perfect like this, but also I can go ahead and make it uh, half uh, way down. So I'm gonna put it like this. And now I'm gonna continue on with this line. I can go ahead and put it down uh, just straight, but since I wanna show you how to make this thing, let's just put it offset a bit like this to this side. Now, I want to finish up this thing, and here is a really important thing. When you want to snap to a other line, what you do is when you, you still have your line selected, you hover over the line where you want to create, and this blue uh, square will appear. This will allow you to basically draw out a line. So you, I, I haven't clicked anything, so I just go up and down, this thing will snap to it. So I'm gonna put it like this and just click so I can finish up uh, this thing in the perfect uh, height and then just go all the way down and click here. Now, as soon as I do this, you can see that I have my entire sketch sketched out and we can see here that unlike in the first video where we had everything defined and the borders were, bl were black like this, over here now we have all of our borders as blue. This means that our sketch, even though it's made and can be extruded, it's basically uh, not constrained or not defined. So let's see how do we confine and constrain everything. The first thing I want to do is I want to move this thing to the center of the origin. Now, if you take a look at the model that we created or the lines that we created, we're gonna see over here, we have the center point for uh, this uh, circle here. So I want to make this thing to be at the same place as our center. So the way to do it is you click on coincident. So you click here and you'll click, click. Actually, we have to hold down the shift. There we go. So now it's coincident and it's moved over here. I'm gonna hit on select. There we go. So now we need to define some of the properties of this uh, sketch. So the way that we do this is go over to create and ske uh, sketch dimension or just pressing the D button. I'm gonna keep on using the shortcuts and I will just say whatever I'm using. So press D and make this thing 
the size that we want. In this case, let's round it up to 40. You can see that this thing just uh, changed the height. Let's make this thing, all right, 110. And these two are defined. So now, what I want to do here is I'm gonna click on this uh, object here and I can give it a uh, size. But before I do that, if you take a look at over here, you're gonna see that if I select this, it tell, it's telling me this, this thing is tangent constrained. So what this means is that this line is tangent to this uh, circle here. So what I want to do is I want to have this side be the same, uh, have the same constraint with this side. So what I want to do is hold on shift and click over here. So with these two selected, now we're going to take a look at this part where it says constraint. Generally, whenever you select something, it's going to give you which constraints are actually available for that given selection. In this case, what I want to do is we want to get this same symbol that we see over here where it says tangent. If you hover above it for a second, it will give you an explanation. As we can see over here, it constrains a curve and another object so, they, uh, so that they touch at a single point but never cross each other. So if I click on this, now these two are tangent to, uh, to each other. What this means is that now I can select this uh, over here, this line, and I want to make it horizontal. Now I'm going to click here, and this will constrain it, uh, just like uh, this one. Okay, now I can also go ahead and start giving some dimensions. So if I click over here and drag out, this will allow me to put a radius on this thing. Now, take into account that unlike previously, this is not the diameter, but the radius. So let's go with 20 and click over here. Now, the first thing that you're going to notice is as soon as we did this, what happened is that now we still have the lower portion of our sketch black, while the top here is, or, or the, the bottom portion is blue, while the top here is black. So once it's black, it's well defined and the blue still needs to get uh, defined. So what I can do here is again, we can go in with the D button, click over here and click on the bottom. And this can give me the height for this thing. So if I click over here, let's say 70. Now I can see that this line here got black. And the only thing that I need is just these three to get defined. Now, I want to have this line over here. I can either define it with a, a length or what I can do is I can click on it, hold down the shift and click this line. Now, with these two selected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it equal. And now you can see that this line by making it equal to this, the only thing that we, we are missing here is uh, just this blue line. So I'm going to select it. And I have to go ahead and give it the distance between uh, this line and this line. But now let's say we make a bit of an error and we want to go ahead and select this edge and this one. And for example, if I want to go ahead and uh, basically make them perpendicular, what I'm going to uh, get is this line and this line, and it's going to give me an error, fail to resolve. Now, the reason for this is that these are not perpendicular to each other, so that doesn't work. So again, we just go with D, press over here, down to the bottom, and move it to the side. So this can be 35. And now our entire sketch is in black color. It means that our entire sketch has been well defined. Now, what I want to do is just add in one more piece uh, in here. So I'm going to create a circle. Now, if you, if you go over here for the circle, you have uh, you can just press C, and that is going to uh, create a, a center di center diameter uh, circle. So I'm going to click C. I'm going to put it anywhere around here it really doesn't matter and now what i want to do is i want to select this and i want to move it over here as well 
So again, we're going to do the same thing. This and uh, hold on, shift, click, and it, it's moving it over here. So this is if you use if we use coincident, but also uh, let's say that if you have this uh, circle uh, put up any, anywhere uh, else, what you can do is you can always go ahead and make it tangent. So tangent means that you go click here and here, and now this circle will always be tangent to this side. So now, uh, once this thing is all made up, let's just go D and give the size for this one. Let's go with something like 20 again. And there we go. So everything is well defined. We saw how to put this thing over here. So now I can just click on finish sketch. And there we go. We got our sketch. And now if I go ahead, click over here, I can go and simply extrude this thing to, so I can get the width that I need. So let's go with something like 45 uh, centimeters. Click OK. And we got a model of some sort of a hinge for something. So what we can do now is we can add either uh, some sort of a fillet or a chamfer to the edges. Let's go over here, try something like this. So I'm gonna select these two, maybe even a bit here, and these two, and I can right click on them and choose fillet or chamfer. Let's go with fillet for these and just drag it outwards until we can see how they look. Now, the thing here is if you over uh, do it on this, as you can see, it self corrects and it gives you a different look. So as you can see, unlike other softwares where it's going to give an error here, you can over correct like this. But in this case, I just want to round them up like 10 millimeters is fine and click OK. Now, note one thing, as soon as I did this, it, in our timeline over here, it left another uh, action. It means that in this action, this was done. So now let's say we want this thing to be less pronounced or a smaller amount. The way you do this is you can go over uh, in our actions and we can either double click or right click and edit feature. So if you do this, it's going to traverse you back and let you change the options. So if you go and decrease this to five and click OK, now it's updated. And the good thing is that you can backtrack as far as you want. As long as whatever you've done doesn't break the model, you will always be able to change whatever it is that you're working on. Now, what you saw here is I added in the fillets on the edges, but also what you can do is you can just select a face, right click, and on it. Uh, now you can see that we have some different uh, options, but in this case, what I want to do is go ahead, modify, and chamfer so what this will do if i do this it's going to give you chamfer on all of the edges that are intersecting with this face as you can see over here on both sides we have a two millimeter uh chamfer being applied and i'm going to click ok as soon as i click ok note that down in here i'm going to get another action like so so we can see that uh, when I hover above something, it will show you what it's doing in, in the sketch. So these two options here that we can see are made because we added in uh, those elements. So now if you want to continue working or chipping at this thing, let's say we want to uh, add in some more uh, elements down here. What we can do is we can create another sketch. So let's go over create so I'm gonna press s create on create sketch and now instead of clicking here on the base what I want to do is I want to click on the face now we can start sketching in here so for this one what I'm gonna do is I want to create a cutout in here on the base so I'm gonna go create rectangle and I can press just the R button so I'm gonna click on it and you can see that once you get on the bottom line over here, you see this uh, blue X appear. This uh, means that your line is snapped. So I'm going to click and drag outwards, something like this, click OK, 
and click one more time. All right. Now I want to go in and I want to go and define these. Let's go with 15. And this thing should be the length on this one. Let's go with something like 40. And what I want to do here is I want to select, I want to actually finish this uh, sketch. Now we have this thing and we want to make it cut through this uh, entire object. So I'm going to go ahead, click on extrude, move it in the, uh, in the other area or in the other um, direction and just change the extend type from distance to either all or we can click on object but since we want to go over to all this will go through the entire thing so make sure the operation is set as cut click OK and there we have we have cut this thing uh, over again we can select uh, both of these uh, edges over here we can round them up like what we have in here so again just fill it I think we did like five millimeters and click OK. And just like that, we got this uh, hinge part uh, all created and uh, well defined. So we can either use it for uh, as a model or we can uh, maybe even use it for 3D printing. And with this, we basically have covered the sheer basics on how to start creating sketches and start extruding them out. Now, take into account that Fusion 360 can be a very, very powerful piece of software that has a variety of uses that it can be uh, used for real world applications. And even though it can do a lot of different, very complex uh, things, it all starts with the uh, understanding the idea behind it and it, that is how to make the most simple of uh, sketches and then how to be able to extrude them and give them the thickness and then from there start refining them more and more but since those uh, topics can be a bit more uh, technical and a bit more advanced we'll keep them for another video so for now I hope you guys had fun and you managed to learn something new from this video. I really do hope that uh, at least by watching it, you got the tingles, so to say, for uh, Fusion 360 and you might want to go ahead and check it out. And if you would like to support me and the channel, you can always click the join button. The direct links will always be in the description below. And the most helpful thing you can do is just click the like and subscribe buttons leave your comments below in the video and as always thank you very much for watching and i will see you all in the next video bye bye